It's because of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Ignorance. And uh, ignorance is is the enemy. Mm -hmm. The more we learn about it, there is another survey that was published in USA Today, and it was copied by all other newspapers. That what general American thinks about the Islam and Muslims, and they said that those people that they have some kind of personal contact with a Muslim, their positive was res their response was positive about Islam. With compared to those that they have not met a Muslim in their life, they were negative because they have taken it from the fear and from not personally any experience from mm. what kind of people are Muslims. Mm -hmm. And I think if, as you mentioned, that you opened up the Quran and you read a page, the first page, I would say that Very if inspired. if I am a student of world religions mm -hmm. i have gone through the bible mm -hmm. and have gone through the hindu books and the buddhist books and others and and islam and i would say that you would find more than 80 percent teachings of islam mm -hmm. and christianity is similar mm -hmm. and as far as the muslim faith is concerned as a teaching and the commandment of Quran, we have to believe in the Torah, in the Gospel, in the Book of Sam, because these were the, re the books that were revealed on Moses and Jesus and Prophet David and others. Mm -hmm. And without that, the Quran says you cannot be believers. So we believe in the first five books of the old new old testament which is called torah mm -hmm. and we believe in the books that were revealed in on jesus these were the true teachings of god that were revealed the only thing is that at that time when moses and jesus were the tools and the resources of recording information were not as much as we have today so that's why you see that the four authors of the Gospels, they have some differences with each other mm -hmm. because the recording things were not as perfect. With compared to that, Prophet Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus. By that time, the world has developed 600 years. And the, the writing and the recording resources and more people knew how to do it. That's why when Prophet Muhammad was teaching the Quran, it was being written down all of it. Unlike the previous prophets, the scripture of Islam was written down in the writing form within the life of the Prophet Muhammad. And they did not have to decide later on what was he saying. That's why you will be surprised to know this fact that there are 1.9 billion Muslims in the world today with 50 countries with the majority of the Muslims all the way from Indonesia to Algeria and the Morocco, but there is no second version of the Quran. They are all follow and read the same Quran without any difference of one letter. Besides this, a big number of Muslims, thousands of them, memorize the Quran from cover to cover. And this includes a, as young child as eight years and seven years and then the rest. And this is the, the speciality and this is the miracle of the Quran which is still alive and you can see it. I can bring you a child from Atlanta who is eight years old and he memorized the whole Quran. Uh, one additional thing about fear, false fear. Uh, in the news they keep saying jihad, jihad, jihad. And word jihad in Arabic means struggle, overcome the difficulty. And always when they use it in the media, they use it in negative way. For example, jihad means I will overcome my shortcoming. I have to purify myself. I have to be better person. I have to force myself to deny the temptation of daily life. It's just like one of the pillars of Islam is fasting. And we fast 
uh, so happened last year and this year is going to be in summer. And summer is very difficult. You have the food in front of you, you have the water in front of you, <laughs> and you are thirsty and hungry, but you are fasting. You overcome your temptation to drink or to eat because your obligation to the religion tell you do not eat from sunrise to sunset. That is jihad. When you uh, prevent yourself from commit adultery, that is jihad. When you prevent yourself from <coughs> taking money is not belong to you, that is jihad. So that is misconception, that is lack of education, that abuse of the word, a struggle, a purify yourself. The reason for that also the major differences in Islam and other religion, we don't have a savior. We save ourselves by commit ourselves to the religion to do the right thing. If I wanna save myself, of course, I'm not going to enter heaven except by the grace of God. But for God to accept me, I have to struggle to make jihad, to purify myself, to leave the temptation of daily life, which is, we all know that. It's, so we're surrounded with temptation. If you s submit to it, you are going to weak and weak and weak. But when you say, I'm not going to eat because I'm fasting, I'm married, I have to respect my spouse, I have to respect my community, I'm not going to commit adultery, I'm not going to steal, I'm going not going to take the right of the other, I'm not going to kill, and everything this, which is sometimes the life pushing you toward that, that is jihad, that is purified. You are responsible on your own action. You cannot do negative thing. You are a person with mind, and with willpower, God created us with the willpower and we have the ability to choose the right and the wrong. If we choose the right, we are safe. If we take the wrong, we are in trouble. And that's what Islam all about, is examine yourself, commit yourself to the serving the creator, which is God. And that's all. The fact is that you, and me and we all are going to die and there was time when we were not here so we were here for a short period of time in this world and we will go away and the other people will come <laughs> the one who has created us he wants us that whatever life i have given you you spend this life according to what i command you so the purpose of our life is that we do what God wants us to do. We live what the way God wants us to live. How we know what God wants from us? God sends his messages through his beloved people that he loves them, that he, they are close to them. They are the people like Moses and Jesus and Muhammad. And on the day of judgment, we, you, me, and everybody, we will be standing in front of God and he will be judging all of us. Did you spend your life? I gave you everything in the world. I gave you your family and your food and your whatever you needed. As a result of that, did you obey me or not? And over there, I would be telling God that, yes, I obeyed you the best the way I could know what you want from me. At that time, we will be tested that how we have lived. And if you look with this perspective, you find out that what Prophet Jesus taught and Prophet Moses taught and Prophet Muhammad taught were coming from the same line. But the message given by Prophet Muhammad in the form of the Quran is recorded throughout the history and is intact even today and it becomes the most reliable book throughout the scriptures that I have in my hand and that's what I, I depend on. The other thing practically living especially related with the Muslim society that how when you live by the will of God God gives you pleasure in not only in the day hereafter but also in this life 
And I wanted to touch this point before we finish that when Prophet Muhammad started preaching his the message that he received from God, one thing that he emphasized too much was the social justice, which was not there at that time. Slaves, servants, women had no rights. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, boosted the rights and the value of the slaves and the servants and the women. And today, even we enjoy with those rights and social justice that Prophet Muhammad gave. He made it clearly in his last sermon that there is no priority of any white over black, of our black over white, except that that they, the one has more piety and more righteousness. And one, he has one African man in his companions. His name was Bilal. He was a black person. But the pure Arabs and even the relatives of the Prophet Muhammad used to call him our Sayyiduna. What does our it mean? Master. Our master. So that black person got this much respect. And then, you know, I don't know if you have ever seen a marriage contract in a Muslim religion. The, when a Muslim men and women, they get married, the agreement is this, that the man will be responsible for all the bills mm. and the financial burden and the responsibilities. Women, even if she is rich, she is not required legally that she has to contribute but it is his responsibility to take care of her all her needs all her um, situations and that's why you will find out that in many uh, muslim families the wives are housewives yeah by choice they, right. they chose to be a uh, right. housewife because it's more comfortable for them of course but it is it doesn't mean uh, a, a muslim a man will force his wife to sit at home. No, uh, there is Muslim woman in this society, in Middle East society, or in every uh, every society. In every have, profession. Uh, every profession. One other thing, uh, I, I recently it come to my attention uh, through watching the Christian channel about the day of judgment. We know the earth and the we, life we live is going to end in one day. And we don't know when that could be Tomorrow it could be a million years from now, a million years from now. But one thing we agree on, we're going to face God, and we are responsible on our action. Mm -hmm. And we agree there are two places after the life, either heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. In Islam, we're trying to remind us, and we remi we're trying to remind everybody around us, everyone around us, we should take advantage of this life to purify our life, to purify our actions, to be rewarded by the ultimate goal, to go to heaven. And in the Quran, is a beautiful book. When you read it, you will see a step by step what will happen to us after death. It's not a mystery. As a Muslim, the Quran tell me when, what, it's going to be asked of me if I make one ounce of bad deed I will get it if I make one ounce of good deed I will get it with mercy of God there is a way to go to heaven by following the teaching of God so God will accept us and give him give us his mercy because we don't want to go to the other side where is the description of hell and that our goal in life because the life is short really when you think about it is is very very short and we spend it to argue and we condemn other people and we forget ourselves we should ask ourselves are we in the position where we could say i'm pleasing myself i'm satisfied with myself i'm doing the right thing with god before I start talking about the other and condemn them. In Islam, we should not 
ever condemn any person. We have to look at our first, at our deed. We correct ourselves. We make jihad on ourselves by cleaning ourselves before we start thinking about that. That is, is, is very important. If there's uh, one more question that I may ask before we go into the break, I noticed that many um, Muslim women cover themselves up. I know there are a lot of our listeners out there who are probably wondering the same thing as I'm wondering. 